upon a time, Nintendo ruled the video game world. Partially because they'd bully third parties into keeping their games exclusive to the NES and Super Nintendo. But after the release of the Sony PlayStation, third parties left Nintendo high and dry, mainly due to the fact that CDs had many advantages over cartridges. And ever since this, things have never quite been the same for Nintendo's home consoles. The same can't be said for Nintendo's handhelds, though, and since the Switch technically falls into this category, I'm 100% certain that things will turn around. However, the dry years of Nintendo's third-party relationships, ranging from the Nintendo 64 all the way to the Wii U, weren't completely fruitless. There were a few gems here and there, and I'll tell you about the 10 finest. Welcome to the Top 10 Third-Party Nintendo Exclusives During the Dry Years. Roll the intro, monkeys! get started, there's only gonna be one game per franchise, and no games that involve Nintendo IPs like Hyrule Warriors or Tokyo Mirage Sessions, because those are instances of Nintendo bribing third parties with their own franchises. I mean, it's not like they had a choice as to which platform games involving Zelda characters would be released on. Kinda like how you'd use your Acura to pick chicks up at the mall. Also, this is my list, so there's gonna be some heavy hitters missing from the lineup. But that being said, let's start with number 10, Chameleon Twist 2. It's kind of surprising to me that nobody really talks about this series that much these days. But in the late 90s, 3D platformers are hard to get right because the concept was new and complicated compared to how simple 2D platformers were to make. Sunsoft tried to get bold with these games by centering the gameplay around playing as a chameleon who uses his tongue in clever ways to traverse through two short but sweet adventures. And since Chameleon Twist 2 is better, it gets the spot on the list. Number 9. Zombie U. Here's a game that's oftentimes overlooked for being somewhat unfinished since it was rushed for the Wii U's launch. But a few glitches here and there aren't enough to deter me from enjoying a game for what it is. After all, I'm used to playing NES games. Zombie U was refreshing, at least for me, because it hooked you right from the beginning and made great use of the gamepad. Unlike other horror games, dying here doesn't just bring you back to the last checkpoint. I mean, it kinda has a checkpoint, but chances are if you die, you're probably far away from the safe house, and to get all your old items back, you'll have to kill your old zombie self to recover your stash. And supplies are scarce, so even though the only enemies you deal with are zombies, being outnumbered can be terrifying, keeping you on edge the entire way through. It's a shame nobody played this, though. Number 8, Xenoblade Chronicles X. I know everybody probably thinks Xenoblade Chronicles for the Wii's better, and you might be right, but Xenoblade Chronicles X did a better job at drawing me in right off the bat. I still haven't played this game enough to finish it, but that's only because at the time I played it, all seven of my uncles died in the infamous Grease Fire in 97, and I just didn't feel like finishing a lengthy RPG. Still though, I liked the game, and if I left Xenoblade off the list entirely, then somebody would track me down and slay me where I stand. Plus I can't put Tokyo Mirage Sessions on here, so there. And don't worry though, a few of my uncles came back to life, so it's okay for me to make fun of the rest of their untimely demises. Number 7, Zack and Wiki, Quest for Barbarossa's Treasure. Is it Barbaros or Barbaros? I don't know, fuck it, I don't care. This is quite possibly the most famous underrated game of all time, which is kind of an oxymoron in itself. This is a unique puzzle game that's a heck of a mess of fun that nobody seems to want to play. Nobody played it on the Wii, and then it was released for the eShop on the Wii U, but nobody seemed to want to play it then either. Oh well, to everybody who skipped this game, it's your loss, not Capcom's. Wait, it is or isn't Capcom's loss? Oh, okay, okay, thanks. You guys are dicks. Number 6, WWF No Mercy. Back in the early 2000s, the PlayStation had the SmackDown games that eventually evolved into the 2K series we have today. And while the PlayStation games were good, they didn't hold a candle to the 64's No Mercy. Widely considered to be the greatest wrestling game of all time, No Mercy was the perfect storm. This game came out when wrestling's popularity was higher than it's ever been, and when the gaming was advanced enough for extra variety in the types of matches you could have. Now you could have special guest referees, fight backstage, go through announce tables, have ladder matches, and much more. I know the SmackDown series had ladder matches at the time in addition to Hell in a Cell matches, but No Mercy's ladder matches were just more dramatic with the slow ladder climbs that would annoy casual players. But us wrestling fans wanted the fake realism of human beings climbing ladders slower than regular Gonzalez. So not only is this quite possibly the best wrestling game of all time, but it's also exclusive to the Nintendo 64. Number 5, Metal Gear Solid The Twin Snakes. This is a little bit of a gray area since it's a remake of a PS1 exclusive, but this is more than just a simple port, and to this day, Metal Gear Solid Twin Snakes has never seen the light of day on anything other than the GameCube. Developed by the same people who made Eternal Darkness, I'm not counting that as a third party game, this is basically Metal Gear Solid 1 with the Metal Gear Solid 2 game engine, and it's every bit as good as it sounds. Number 4, Bayonetta 2. The Wii U didn't have a whole lot of third party support, but some way, somehow, Nintendo was able to lock this down as an exclusive and sadly nobody played it. Which is a real shame, seeing as how it's an improvement over the first game in every conceivable way. Hopefully this gets a second chance at life on the Switch though. Make it happen, N-Dog. Make it happen. 
Number 3, Sonic Colors. This might fluster a lot of people to see this game so high on the list, with Sonic having a bit of a poor reputation for more than a decade now. Sure, the series has had some stinkers here and there, but what just might be the best 3D Sonic game ever made was exclusive to the Wii. And the DS, but that version's completely different, so fuck you. Sonic Colors gives the blue blur long overdue new power-ups that make the game feel fresh. Plus a perfected 2D to 3D mechanic that was originally started in Sonic Unleashed, and a story that knows its role of being so cheesy it's fun instead of trying to be serious. All this doesn't sound like much, but it's all Sonic ever really needed to be great again. Why Sega finds this so hard to realize, I have no idea. Number 2, Resident Evil Zero. I know what a lot of you are thinking. No, but Resident Evil 4 is better. Uh, I'm a stupid butt man, and I like to put my finger on my butt to make it look funny, but not stick it in there. Yes, Resident Evil 4 was great, but it wasn't so exclusive. Go suck an egg, that was over a decade later. Resident Evil Zero is the reason I bought a GameCube, and I couldn't have been happier. Yeah, dropping items all over the place instead of having item boxes was weird, but I didn't mind it so much with the whole dynamic of switching back and forth between characters being so damn compelling. I don't know why a lot of people don't like this that much, I thought it was very interesting. Plus, this is the final Resident Evil game with obstructed camera angles and tank controls, which is something that I still miss to this day. I'm not necessarily saying that they were better, but it definitely made things more scary. Whether or not that's a good reason to be scared is a question for another day. All I know is that this game holds a special place in my ass. Number 1, Mario Party 3. <laughs> When you're talking about Nintendo's third-party games, it doesn't get much more literal than Mario Party 3. No, I'm serious. This is number one. I'm not changing it. If it steams your clams or I miss anything, let me know down below. If you agree with me, then give this video a like and subscribe if you haven't yet. My neighbor Cup named me Cameron, and I'll see you next time. So I want to say thank you to your loyalty. Thank you for your support.